the Clayman Institute for Gender Research at Stanford University. Reinvigorating gender equality in the 21st century. We really have an opportunity to, um, to sort of jumpstart the gender revolution again. focused on currently at the Clayman Institute, our theme is called uh, Moving Beyond the Stalled Revolution. And uh, what this means is it draws on a bunch of research that shows that really across lots of different indicators of uh, gender equality, whether we look at the gender wage gap, a whole host of things, the progress towards equality has stalled since about the early 1990s. First thing is to really raise awareness about, uh, about the stall towards gender equality. I mean, one of the things that you see, especially amongst young people, is that they really feel like gender equality has been, uh, has been achieved. And secondly, the second goal is to get um, uh, researchers really focused on this topic. We know a lot currently about the stall. We know what it looks like. We see this stall across lots of measures, but what we know far less about is what's causing it and what can be done about it. And so I'd like us to be really um, asking that question in a way that encourages lots of people to work on finding solutions. So one of the things we've been doing is uh, is bringing in um, all different kinds of speakers uh, here to the Clayman Institute who've, get, who've been giving talks um, on things that they've worked on that are relevant for helping us think about how to move beyond the stall. So implicit in this is an idea that, well, everybody's trying to, you know, this is America, everybody's trying to move up. Upward mobility is seen as good in either status or, or earnings, but people also have these gender blinders on. So it's really easy to look at statistics about the growth of women's income and the growth of women's control of wealth and say, and that's the end of the story. But I always ask, well, so what? This doesn't mean anything unless that translates into influence. In contrast to the life sciences, uh, engineering and the physical sciences are still strongly sex typed in favor of men in our, uh, in our society. Thus the background gender frame um, in the IT context is more powerfully present and relevant to what's going on because people think of it as more of a guy kind of thing to do. I very quickly realized that it couldn't just be about the dads, um, that it also had to be about the moms and about women and about changing gender dynamics. Really the book ends up being about gender. So regardless of how much money you earn, if you don't have savings, if you don't have wealth to fall back on, you're just a paycheck away you know, from, from severe economic difficulties. So when we laid out the topic, moving beyond the stalled revolution, what we're trying to do is get people involved in thinking about that problem, helping people be um, brainstorm with us about what it would take to move the, the gender revolution forward, and then using those brainstormed ideas to pick some specific um, subtopics that we think we can work on in conversation with um, prominent academics from all over the country, um, in conversation with, uh, with people in the workplace, industry kinds of people, government people. And so we really see our role as, as, setting, as asking the important questions and setting agendas and, and, then, and then creating the infrastructure to help advance knowledge on those topics and to, and to be sure that um, the gender research that is being done is getting out to the people who need it. So I think this has an opportunity to affect um, lots of women. Can we narrow the wage gap further? Can we increase the capacity of women to stay in the pay labor force, which we know makes a lot of difference? Can we get men more involved in, uh, in, in, t in t participating in the family? I mean, can we really make some progress on this? So I, I think there's a lot of potential um, to, to, to really um, decrease the amount of inequality that we're sort of currently stuck at.